Mr. Marcus Lloyd, who um, has been in our architecture program, is now an STC student, is going to guide us through a second workshop on twin motion. Mm -hmm. We sort of got started by introducing a little bit, and we're going to hopefully take you to the next level. So, Marcus, go ahead and take it away. Yep. Thank you so much, Glenn. Um, please feel free, even if you are doing like a little bit of you know side work. Um, if you have any inputs, I would appreciate it. The more we're interactive with this, the better I think it'll come out. So let's just go ahead and get started. So last time we covered the what. So we found out what Twin Motion was. We know that it's a 3D rendering software and visualization program. We went through the why. Why is it important? How does it allow us to continue to push the boundaries of what we can get out of our projects? We looked at a workflow, so we actually imported a project and we noticed the ways in which we can use different programs to get into Twin Motion. Um, and then we just kind of went through some tips about what the interface looks like. And lastly, we did a demo. So today's agenda, we're gonna look at some updates basically of Twin Motion. There's been some exciting stuff happening behind the scenes. We'll go through a project brief which I think will be fun if everyone is able to get involved and take that brief into another live demo. And then we'll talk about some of our reflections throughout the whole process. So oh, if that sounds all right, we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so some quick updates. I'm gonna play this short video and it's going to elaborate on some cool stuff that Motion has been up to. Awesome. So that was a quick video of the new update that Twinmotion has released. It is their 2023.2 version, um, which has a lot of really cool features that I feel like people using the software have been waiting on. And one of those is Lumen. Lumen is part of the Unreal Engine system that is able to direct or um, direct indirect light to adapt to changes that you put on the fly that can affect your geometry in the project. It allows the changing sun angle to be able to coordinate with the time of day, such as opening an exterior door, and it brings new levels of realism to some real-time applications. So that is the really big you know, thing people have been waiting on, and it really just pushes the boundary of how realistic and you know provocative you can make some of these renders be. So that's the really big update. I know you guys kind of saw maybe some animated objects in it as well. They've done a lot of work to also enable people to import some different um, animation software as well, which is cool. So for us, we're going to look at how this is impacting, you know, from a real-time example. So this is what you're kind of going to get with the version before the new update that they've had. You can kind of understand, of course, the context of this photo. It's a sofa 
But with the new update, we'll be able to see just how, you know, this lighting is actually going to improve the image. So we're getting a lot more photorealism out of this new update and it's doing a crazy update and it's really going to allow us to, you know, put more emphasis on what we're trying to get out of our design. So a couple more examples of what this looks like. People have been using the software to like make apartments and everything. And you're really able to see how the lighting is able to reflect off of those windows, cast some really good shadows and really just make the photo feel more real in general. Okay, now we're gonna look at our design brief for the day. Does anyone know anything special about this time of year? Just any, any guesses? Days are super short right now. Okay, true, because it's fall, it's getting darker outside, but in terms of holidays, what's, what's coming up? <laughs> Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> it's just summer. So so for today's session, I thought it would be cool for us to introduce a design brief. We've been put in charge of organizing a last minute Halloween party. We'll be allotted resources to pull it off, but we'll have to um, show basically our client um, how we were able to visualize the event before so they know what to expect. We have to use twin motion to create compelling scenes to motivate them and others to be excited for the event. So if anyone has any experience in party planning, I'd be awesome to get input throughout this, but that's kind of what we're going to be centering our design challenge for today on. Okay. So of course that takes us to our demo. This is gonna be our workflow as we're going through this design challenge. We're first going to define our environment. We're then going to create some images. We're going to look at the assets and ways in which we can populate our model. We're going to see how we can change some of the visibility and scene options inside of our project that then allows us to look at various ways in which we can export via be video, panorama, you name it. We'll just try to figure out ways in which we can really, you know, make sure we're selling the images to the client at the end of this project. So let's go ahead and go into Twin Motion. Okay. So here we are with Twin Motion. I have a project loaded for us. Today's date. We'll load it up and get started. It looks like this is the Revit sample health, sample health. <laughs> <laughs> It is the Revit sample house. So we're just building on top of, again, what we did in our first workshop um, and trying to figure out ways in which we can optimize it for our design brief today. So this is where we left off last time that we were in our workshop. We were experimenting in ways in which we can import materials. You can kind of see how we changed the roof. Um, we've got to look at some of the ways we populated rocks and vegetation into it. Um, but if anyone had some words, I guess, describe the environment of this, it feels very light i would say it reminds us more of like summer um spring and as we know like you said the days are getting shorter it's getting darker outside we should probably try to make this a little bit spookier if we're trying to you know optimize for a halloween party so how can we go about doing that we have to ask ourselves you know what do we want the environment to look like how do we want to affect the weather um what is the ambiance we really want to get out of this situation so i think to get started what i like doing whenever it comes to my workflow I'm going to go to my preferences. Again, this depends on what your laptop can do. I'm working in medium right now. So as we go about the project, trying to figure out ways in which we can import you know, different methods, using medium will not make my workflow too slow. I can put it on low as well, as you can kind of see the difference of how it is going to affect the textures, but just optimize it for whatever your computer's performances are able to handle. As you can kind of see, it looks a lot flatter this year but we are able to probably get some easier workflow experiences. So I'll go ahead and change the quality back to medium. Here we go. Alrighty, to get started, I really think we should change maybe the time of day. So if it's Halloween, let's make it darker outside a little bit. I think that's a good idea. Definitely. All right, so I'll go ahead and darken things outside a little bit. And we can see how it is affecting our environment. 
here we go. Let's land somewhere a little bit earlier. You can start here as a starting point. Looks like the beginning of a party, like, you know, probably a fall afternoon. But um, we'll get started with that for the meantime. So what we may want to do next is find ways in which we can affect some of the materials of the home. I don't know if the home looks spooky to y'all, but maybe we should make the home a little bit darker in terms of some of the materiality in the walls. Like, there's nothing wrong with, of course, the way it's looking now, but let's try to make the, the house seem a little bit darker in terms of some colors. So as you remember last time, all we have to do is go to our materials library. Let's look at something. For example, we can do some wood and let's see what this does. A darker color. How do we feel about that? That feel witchy? <laughs> Anyone else want to try any other options or are we kind of satisfied with that? The glasses, really the glasses are really bright. That is a really, really good point. And we'll talk about it as well. Do you have any shingles or anything that's uh, looking sort of old and kind of decrepit looking? Mm, no, 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 you're right, you're right. So what we can also do with our materials is use the search bar. So we can look up shingles and see what we can find. We have some roof coverings. Maybe not in terms of what we're looking for. Let's see. This is the program. This whole program that you're modifying, that is Twin Motion itself. Yeah, okay. exactly. So we're currently in Twin Motion, the program software. Um, and Twin Motion allows for the same amount of editing as I could edit for the materials. I would say the flexibility is a lot easier here in Twin Motion. Um, of course, you can manipulate materials in Revit. It also depends on what you have something called a direct link to Revit, meaning if you make changes here in Twin Motion, you'll be able to see and reflect it in Revit if Revit is also installed on your native you know, operation system. Um, I didn't mean to derail this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe, keep that material, maybe go grungier so that it kind of looks like it's just a little dirty or something like that. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. So we knew that we were using that material. All we have to do is go into our properties and we can affect the grunge a little bit. Before we do so, let's go ahead and up our scale some. Just so we can make things out a little bit easier. We'll zoom in a little bit so we can see the details. And we can kind of see how we have populated that darker color. If we want to grunge it up a little bit, we just do the slider. And we're noticing how we're kind of getting this darker wash look from everything. Mm -hmm. So I say we'd be good about somewhere here. There we go. Um, And I would say also just to stay on the theme of trying to make the house look scarier, let's maybe just make the roof black. So I can look up the word carbon because we have a black carbon material that we can use. There we go. Once again, easily in our properties, we can affect the scale. We can add some grunge to that as well for that effect. Awesome. We'll zoom back a little bit. I think this is looking a little bit better in terms of something scary or a fall night, what we're trying to go after. If we're all cool with that, we will continue on now. We are also going to maybe let's change the grass a little bit. Does the grass look too happy for our be vibes? I think so too. You have a really good point. The trees too, as well, right? Okay. So exactly. <laughs> to do that. <laughs> all we have to do to affect our environment once again, remember we're going to our scene and we're looking at our ambience. So we've affected our weather a little bit as we know i'm gonna exit out of here let's go ahead and affect the trees so to make it seem more fall like all we have to do is pull our slider some and does anyone notice that the trees are changing color Ooh, fall, fall color fall color okay we're getting better to how we want to orient ourselves for a halloween fall theme what we can also do is once again, we change the weather a little bit. We have these options up here. But like we said, we wanted to change our grass. So to go to grass, once again, we are in our library. We're in our materials. Let's scroll. 
until we find, should be able to find our ground right here. We'll go to nature and we have forest ground, which is just complete dirt. We have another version of that grassy ground. I'm thinking maybe we go with grassy ground so we can kind of get what it looks like to kind of see the decay of maybe some leaves and some of the greenery around. So we'll get a mixture of both. All I have to do is drag and import that onto our model. And as you can kind of see, it all looks brown right now. And that is because what we have a scaling issue. All we have to do is go to our scale. And that should help clear some of that up. Let's zoom in so we can see. And there we go. I think that's looking a little bit better in terms of fall weather and the effect we wanted to get. I think someone else mentioned the windows looked really modern and yeah, like too, blue too and reflective. exactly. All we have to do to fix that is we'll go back to our materials library, we'll go to glass, and we can pick a range of different assortments of what we want to do. And just so we can see, I'll pull in our clear glass, and that's looking a little bit better, right? Okay, awesome. So we'll zoom out a little bit and kind of see where we are. So this is our environment. I think this is looking better for a fall night than we possibly would want to host a Halloween party. Okay, cool. So we've done that. We've affected the time of year. I think what we should be able to do next is maybe change the background. Does the background look as scary kind of as the landscape that we have? It kind of looks really, really bright. And let's see if we can do anything to change that. <laughs> exactly so what we'll do is i'll introduce the concept of if i go back to ambience again all we have to do is go to our ambient settings to make sure that we can change and affect our weather location etc what we're going to do now is we're going to open up something called an hdri environment an hdr hdri environment allows us to really bring some more photorealism to the background of our project i'm going to enable it it may take a second to load, but we'll just wait. As it populates. Let it do its thing. I think it's definitely something in the high definition realm. Of, I'm not too quite sure about those specifications, but. Okay, so it's brightened up quite a bit. It has brightened up a little bit and it doesn't look nearly as scary. But what the environment has done is added something called a sky dome. So if I'm able to look around now, You'll notice if I zoom out, we now have this really big dome all around us, which has basically added a virtual sky environment to encapsulate where we are right now. <laughs> so, again, this is too bright for where we want to go. I've actually looked up a preset already of a possible background we can use, but I'll also show you the difference between a backdrop HDRI which gives us a similar effect, but this time it isn't a dome encapsulating everything around us. So we'll also wait for that to load. We're waiting, we're waiting. Okay, now we have a HDRI backdrop in here as well. As you can kind of see, it's not directly a dome, but we now kind of have our project surrounded by this 360 degree landscape. So for the purpose of this project, of course, you can kind of see how it's intercepting some of our model. 
we have options to help fix that. So all we have to do is go down a little bit and get into our details. Size, height offset. Let's just offset a little bit so it's no longer affecting our ground plane. Okay, cool. So what I'll do is I will import one of our HDR our, um, backgrounds that I think will be fitting for this project. And I'm going to use this one right here. All I have to do is drag it into our project. Mm -hmm. And okay. seems like we're getting more of the night environment that we might be trying to go after. I'll scroll up a little bit because there's definitely some more that we can do. So we're in our global environment. We see our weather. If we could switch back from HDRI. Let's see. Have our camera. We'll go out of here. Library. Okay. The time being, we scroll and we see these are our options. So we currently have the two that we did, Sky Dome, ACRI. I also want you to kind of see the difference of what it also looks like with the Sky Dome effect of that same one. So we can use that same effect for either Sky Dome or our backdrop. So I will just bring that in. There we go. So you can kind of see the differences of the two. I think for these purposes, we may go with the backdrop HDRI. So we'll go back to that, toggle it on. And now let's affect our weather because it still looks a little too bright, of course, for where we are. Using our slider here, it can become more stormy. Like we kind of said, a dark and stormy night. So here we are, something that we can work with. Now, for the sake of where we're going to go next in the project, what we can always do is now remember we can toggle this on or off. And whenever you're using really heavy software in terms of you know manipulating environments, it is going to take up some of the energy of your computer. So for the meantime, let's just turn it off. And we're able to see this environment here that we are still able to work with, which honestly doesn't give us a bad looking background either. So what we'll do next is in a workflow that I like to do, we actually should start populating the party. What we'll do now is we'll scroll into the house and we'll do something called image sets. What we're going to do is we're going to figure out ways in which we can create images in our environment. So all we're going to do at this point is get out of our library. We're going to go to media. And from our last project, you can kind of see some of the photos we have. Now for our client, I think we should have maybe a view directly outside this porch area. How do we feel about this angle? Is this, is this something we can work with for a photo? Okay. All we have to do is click add image. And now what this will do is anytime we wanna reference this scene in the project, all we have to do is click this image and we'll be brought right back to this environment. So we'll do that image. Let's go in the kitchen, possibly where people will be mingling at the party. I think that's a good option. Here we are. We'll add another image. Let's go to the living room. I can imagine people will be in there as well. If we're at this party. As you see, all I had to do was scroll into the environment. Let's go ahead and turn that weather off. We'll create another image. And then let's do one final one outside looking on this small patio. There we go. So we'll add the image. And these are going to be our four images that we hope to give our client who is helping us prepare this party. So we'll start back with image four. Here we are. What do people see at parties? What are some things that you would expect at a Party, food, people, lights, lights. lights, exactly. What about for a Halloween party? What are some things that you might want to see? Yeah, Halloween. Halloween decorations, pumpkins, good. Anyone else have any other thoughts? 
Okay. So how the heck are we going to get all of these assets into our project? We've defined the scope of our images. We know what we want to take and as far as what we're trying to export and show our client. Now we just need to make sure that we're selling what's actually in the environment. So what we can do now is something called our assets library. Objects are where you're going to find objects that you can use for your home, city. You have doors, decals, different ways in which you can customize your environment. I think for the term of this angle, this space here seems kind of empty. But imagine if it was livelier for a party. Let's say we should add, for example, a fire pit right here. Okay, we like fire pits. Mm -hmm. Have people, you know, kind of congregating at this party, um, you know, starting to get on the Halloween spirit. So all we have to do if we want to do something like that, what should we select to get to maybe a fire pit from our objects and home options from this screen? Backyard. I think that's a great answer. Okay. So we'll go to some accessories and we'll scroll down to see what we have. Without doing too much searching, we see that there is a backyard campfire right here. Does this work, everyone? Okay. Let's slide it in. All we do is drag it into our environment. I was going to tell us that we need to download it first. Part of being able to download assets as well as make sure you have an Epic Games account. So all I'm going to do is click this, let it download, and then we will be able to drag and drop it into our project. Yeah. Don't be intimidated by the Epic Games account. Like you can sign up in Google and it just makes all the assets available. No mm -hmm. cost. It's just a way of them. keeping track of uh, what you downloaded. Yep. So we'll wait for that. So you got all these elements from one repository or something? Yeah, all built in within twin motion. Oh, wow. Yep. So this is our fire pit. Does it look a little small? Is it, is it what we, what should we do? Maybe we should have some chairs. Some chairs. Okay. Great idea. So all we have to do to scale it up a little bit is use our toolbar here at the top, which we discussed last time. We can slide it in a little bit further, but we said chairs. Before we get our chairs in, we should probably set the fire pit on fire, right? We want fire. <laughs> <laughs> we like fire. So all we have to do is once again, we can go to our search bar if we ever need a quick search, look up the word fire, let it do a search. Here we have small fire. That seems like it should work. And we'll just drag that directly into our project. And I don't know if you can see on the screen, we now have fire for our Halloween party. Pretty cool. Can you scale it up? <laughs> now, do you want to cause a forest fire? <laughs> but we can scale it up. We can scale it down. It'd be intensity. Very, very warm. So awesome. Next. What we'll do next is I think someone said chairs. Which chairs be good? OK. All we have to do to get back to the chairs is we go to objects. We'll go to home. We'll go to the backyard because we should probably want backyard chairs. And look there. There's a whole chairs option available to us. Does anyone want to pick a chair that we must possibly can use for this project? Lots and lots of options. Orange pillow? Like, uh, U25. U25, right here? Yeah. Okay. All we do is click download. We'll wait for that to happen. Cool. Now let's drag this into our project. And there we go. We have a chair, our toolbar. We can easily angle this the way we want. And there we go. Now we have a chair. And we should probably add a person, maybe to sell it a little bit more to the client, let them know that this is an active outdoor area. All we have to do now is go to our library. We'll go to characters. And we have a wide variety of ways in which we can import people to really visualize our environment. We can use animated humans. So these will be people actually moving in the environment, which is something that, you know, if you are trying to make a video, which we can talk about at the end. 
Look at you guys all about dancing people. Uh, mm -hmm. Very cool. That is an option we can do for the meantime. Let's just use a pose human. <laughs> we will get to dancing at the okay. end. Okay, let's go. <laughs> but um, let's just import Martin, for example. Martin. So here's Martin. Martin is here at the party. Okay, we're starting to get our environment looking a little bit better. But, you know, this could be any day in the fall. What's going to make this special in terms of Halloween? Exactly. So whenever it comes to using our assets here, if I look up the word Halloween, for example, for a search suggestion, what we'll see are lots and lots of different options of things that we can import. Now, something cool about Twinmotion is we can use an integrated software called Sketchfab, which is a 3D assets library, which allows us to have a wide range of assets that people have put online and allowed us to use into our project. Um, if you also have a .fxb file that you want to import into your project, you can do that as well. But Sketchfab is integrated directly here and gives us assets readily available at us at any time. So for the content that we will be going through today, I've actually curated some different <laughs> Halloween <laughs> themed <laughs> objects that we have. Oh, look at this. Okay, you got a witch's cauldron. Okay. Oh my. We've okay. got some sculptures, some soda cans, some candy, candy bowls, pumpkins, brains in a jar, trick or treat, a dancing skeleton. Let's get started. Who wants to be the first of what maybe should go out here? Trick or treat dances. Yeah, the witch is called cauldron. Bring it out. Okay, let's bring out the witch is cauldron. Here we go. All we'll do now <laughs> is import this into our project. Wait for it to populate. Okay, so we currently have a cauldron on top of our house. Where to it go? It's on top. <laughs> Which may be an issue. What usually happens when you are importing something from Sketchfab, there are going to be some scaling issues. Oh, right. it's a big culture. <laughs> it's the main attraction. What we'll do is we'll scale down our cauldron sum okay, to a better. height that we want. Okay, so things don't always come in scaled to, to match. All right, does, does this look about the right size? Everyone? That's a lot better. Okay. I, I would argument some of there's some small, like, I think there is a red smoke. Oh, coming out? Okay. We can do that as well. All right. So what we'll do is I'll just put this in our corner real quick. And once again, I'm just using our quick action toolbar at the top. And I will put it here in this corner. Okay. Now we have a call. Um, I say let's also maybe add a pumpkin. Definitely. Let's add a pumpkin right here. We see our pumpkin came in quite large again. So all we're now going to do is scale it down some. And here is our spooky pumpkin. That's pretty creepy. <laughs> okay. It is quite large. All right, we'll move it over some. And I think this is starting to do the trick a little bit better in terms of making a scarier environment. Fantastic. Okay, so what we can do from here is move on to our next scene. We're now in the kitchen. What might people do in the kitchen? Maybe they wanna get some pizza, maybe they have some candy. So all we once again have to do is look at some of our assets. We have a very large candy bowl. We'll just scale it down some so people know that, once again, this is a Halloween party. Make it a little bit smaller. And here we go. We've got a bowl of candy now on our table. Okay. Let's think about maybe adding a person, adding some drinks so we can get some more context here in the environment. Definitely. We need party people. We need party people. So all we once again have to do is go to our characters, 
Let's add another posed human. What should be some party environments? We can go to casual once. Oh, we have events. Oh, okay. Okay. So let's see who we might want to add to this Halloween party. Interesting. <laughs> I think we can add maybe this right here and see what it looks like. So all we're doing is moving them in. We have a family. Oh, with a puppy. <laughs> with dogs here for the Halloween party that we're hosting. Okay, I'll go with that. <laughs> okay, cool. To make this look, again, on theme of Halloween, I say let's add one more Halloween theme option that we have. Um, We've got scarecrows. We've got someone saying trick or treat. Okay. Now, what you can kind of see is it is glitching with the floor sum, and that is an easy selection. All we'll do is offset our guy just a little bit. And <laughs> that is creepy. Now we have some guests here for our Halloween party. And I think this is looking pretty solid in terms of, you know, people can recognize now that this is a Halloween party. All right, let's move on to our next image here. We want to see some people dancing. Ooh, dancing skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> We're adding in a very large skeleton. Ooh, wow. And here he goes. Seems a little static, but we have one of our guests here who is just dying to, you know, be here. Um, <laughs> we'll add maybe some pumpkins in this room. Once again, all we did for this was go into our assets library search bar, look up Halloween, and all I've done is personalize some of the items I want in this environment. Once again, we'll scale it down to make sure that we can see them visible here in our project. Keep dragging it. We can also type in 0 0.1 here if needed, but I want to make sure you guys can get the context of scale. Here we are. We've got some Halloween pumpkins. We've got a skeleton here. Maybe we'll have some pumpkin carving contest in this room. Awesome. Let's move on to our last image. So what we see here is a cutout of a person. Now, what we can do with some of these cutouts is if you're moving using a project like Revit and you also have cutouts that you may possibly want to, you know, reference when you are in a rendering software like Twinmotion, what we'll be able to do is use a really neat trick called a replace object. So once again, we are in our properties palette. We can see who this is by clicking it on. Once again, we know that that is correct because we can turn them off and on. All we have to do now at this point is go to our scene graph, our options, replace object. And let's find a character that can possibly sit outside here. So we can go to another posed human. Once again, we're at an event. Maybe we'll get this couple right here looking off into the distance because of how happy they are that they're at this Halloween party. <laughs> so we've downloaded that. And now all we want to do is drag this into our replace object option. Let it populate. And now all we have to do is click Start Replacement. And as you can see, we've replaced characters instantly. This is really beneficial, once again, if you're working in and out of projects. So you don't really want to import you know, a 3D realistic person in Revit. You just want to be able to reference them at one point if you want to replace them further into one of your project deliverables. OK. I think we're looking pretty good in terms of, you know, we're getting spooky. We have some Halloween decorations. We've got a fire. We've got pumpkins. I think our client shouldn't be too mad at kind of what we've done for this Halloween party. So what we'll look at now is some of our visibility and scene graphics. So we'll go come back to this reference here. Um, if we wanted to, for example, change our camera, this actually might be better here. We can go to our options here for camera, and we have something called focal length and depth of field. So this can allow us to basically zoom in and figure out ways in which, you know, we're really trying to either capture or focus on certain objects here. 
So we have our bowl of candy. Once again, maybe we don't want it to be intercepting with our bottle there. So we'll just move that a little bit out the way. Awesome. This might be an image that we'll you know, portray to our client that people are here for a party. So once again, we will go back to our ambiance. We are in our camera settings, depth of feel. You have options to, as you can see, it's kind of blurry right now. So maybe we want to change that, which you have settings of aperture, what you want to focus on. We can actually pick a thing we want to focus on, for example, the bowl. And now you kind of see that we're getting this blurry background almost. So I think this is a really provocative image in terms of what we might see at a Halloween dinner party, someone waiting here. Um, so all we have to do now is refresh this image to make sure that it's going to populate. Um, so I will go ahead and do that. Okay, awesome. Now, I did make a mistake in terms of workflow tips. So this is good in terms of what you might want to be thinking about. What I should have done was duplicate this image before I decided to make another view that we can look at. So what I'll do is, as you can see, this is an exact duplicate of where we were. Say, for example, I really like that original shot that we had. If we zoom out a little bit, turn off our depth of field options to kind of get back to where we were. We know that we affected our focal length a little bit. See so if we can get back to where we were. And let's get back to a scene that we possibly might want to use. This looks about right where we were. That's our image. We'll refresh it. Awesome. So those were just a run through of ways in which, once again, we can change our focal length. What are we trying to portray out of our environment? It just depends on what your design languages and deliverables are. So moving on, I'll just show a little bit more of some quirky features that we can kind of get with some of these image settings. We have something called FX which maybe we want to get this scene here, for example, looking a little bit different. So like I said, make sure that anytime we want to manipulate any of the image sets that we want to make sure we can reference later, we'll just duplicate it. And I will show you how with this new image that we've been able to duplicate, we can affect things like contrast. We can affect our saturation. We can use something called clay render which gives us this really unique effect. I don't know what you may use a feature like this with, but. You make it white. It's like a, like an architectural model made of uh, like clay or like um, foam core or something like that. Okay. So we've done that and you can kind of get some other options of what this is able to do. So what we're able to see now, let's we'll go back here. I think we're looking pretty good in terms of what we want to get out of this Halloween party experience. I have a question for you on image. Can you duplicate image six? And it looks like there's lights on. What happens if you like just turn the, the time of day really late? You know, can... Let's see what happens. So we're on image six. We'll duplicate it. Yeah. And remember, all we have to do is go to our environment settings. And let's see if we can change our time of day. Make it a little bit darker outside. Ooh, that, that, that's looking creepy. <laughs> this is looking creepy. So we're late at night now. We have lights visible in the project, of course, that we have done work for. And we now have the spotlight on our dancing skeleton. Um, so this is part of our environment. Can you add another spotlight just right on him? So maybe we do, like you said, want to give our dancing skeleton the complete, complete spotlight. As you can tell, there's no direct light over him. Once again, all we have to do to do something like that is we have a lights category actually right here, and we have multiple options that we can use. Does someone want to help me choose our spotlight for our dancing skeleton for the night? This one? Okay. Let's go for it. All we'll do is drag it in. Maybe like red. Okay. Change the color. Now, as you can see, we're in our settings. We'll go to color temperature. Wow. This looks spooky. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have that. Remember, if we ever just want to save changes that we'll be able to use, we will just refresh our project. And as you can see, it has added that new light fixture that we've done. So I think we're looking pretty good in terms of what we wanted to get out of this 
you know, exercise of populating what's here. I wanted to show you guys one more trick in case, once again, like we really wanted to show the client, for example, maybe this whole scene being really active, but maybe we can't see what's going on, example, over here because this wall is blocking us and our client really wants to see what's going on in the entirety of the project. What I'll do now is I'll actually create a new image, which means I will just add. And what I'll do is go to our library. I'll go to our tools, I believe. And we have something called sections. Now, what we can do with sections is add a section cube. Does anyone know what a section cube might do? Not a trick question. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Sounds a lot like the section box in the Revis, but now in the rendering environment. Yep. So as you can kind of see these orange outlines, this is the boundary of our section box. So if I want to adjust it some, once again, I will just use this slider. And let's see if we can actually get into our party room in case the client wanted to see our dancing skeleton with the spotlight on them. So... Once again, to make this a little bit bigger, all we have to do is go to our scaling options, and we have this really intuitive way of adjusting the size of our section. So we'll just elaborate here a little bit, and there we go. I think we can see our skeleton poking through a little bit. Maybe we'll drop down just a little bit so we can really see what's going on in there. Awesome. I think we're able to get the context that in that room we have a dancing skeleton. So we have our section box in there. We'll zoom out a little bit. And this might be something that we will be able to send off to our client so they recognize what we're trying to get at with this Halloween party. So what I'll do here is what we've seen are multiple view angles. And we can, again, reference what we need whenever we're at the project based on these images that we did in our workflow earlier. Um, if we get to a point where we don't want the section box on, once again, all we have to do is toggle this off and on. And if you ever get confused about where something like that may be, there's this really convenient search tab here where we can look up section and we can always bring that up. So for the meantime, I'll go ahead and turn it off. And I think we're at a pretty good spot of maybe we can send off some images for our Halloween party special. So export settings. maybe. She actually wants to see a video, though, because we have her images, but she really wants to see, you know, this really turning into a lively space. I think someone mentioned that they wanted to see some animated characters, possibly, if we're going to do a video especially. So all we have to do is go to our characters. And once again, with that new update, they have done great advancements to animations in the software. Let's add Michael. Michael looks like he's excited for Halloween. We'll drag Michael in. And as you can see, Michael is now moving about our project. I don't want to figure out, forget about Martin, but I don't want him to be too static compared to um, our new animated character. So I'll just drag him, make sure he doesn't go in the fire. And let's step him by the chair. Okay, we'll rotate him. And I think we're looking pretty good in terms of where we wanted to get at with this party. So are there, are there, what sort of things can Michael do? <laughs> what can Michael do? That is a great, that is a really great question as well. So Michael can change clothes. We have different cloth options. I think for the Halloween party, maybe something yellow to go on the theme of fall. Okay, sounds good. We have him idle. He can be speaking. He can be walking. He can be sitting. Let's make him dance. <laughs> Michael's now on the dance floor, and he's excited about Halloween. Loves this exactly. <laughs> oh, looks like he has more than one dance room. He does. Let's go ahead and make him back to idle. And what we can even do is put, let's give another option of maybe we'll go with Chris. Chris looks like he has moves. We'll put Chris in. As you can see, though, Chris is partially cut off, which is also pretty spooky. <laughs> this is because of what? Our section. So 
I will make sure to turn our section cube off and we are back in business. We have in our animated character. We said we wanted it to be a dance party. Let's kind of make him the same height as the skull. So we'll just scale him down. Awesome. And it became a dance party. So <laughs> all we've got to do now to kind of wrap up is create a video if our client wants that. And that is also going to be here in our media palette. All we have to do to make a video is click this plus option. We have this first scene and all I'll do for the sake of this project is zoom in a little bit to here so we can kind of see inside this environment in the dinner party. And I think that should be a pretty good visualization of what make a cure. We'll move back some. We're able to press play and let's see what happens. We have now created a video environment of a possible Halloween party for our client. I think we have done the objective of, you know, portraying what a Halloween party may look like. And I think we'll be able to get funded pretty well for it. <laughs> okay. So once again, all we have to do if we want to export some of these images is we'll go to our export panel. I say for this project, a really compelling image that we had was image eight. So we can kind of see everything in that section. Image four is really cool. And then we have our image nine here. Without the section cube. And once again, we want the section cube off. So to make sure that it's off, we're just going to refresh our environments. I will turn it off once again, refresh our environment. And I think these two photos right here would do a pretty good job of what we're trying to get at. Okay. Okay. So all I'll do now is one, We'll save the project because we don't want all of our hard work to disappear. So we'll just wait while that happens. We'll export the image, look at them, and then maybe discuss some of the things that we got out of today's session. In the spirit of Halloween, I have to note that the, the animated people all look like zombies. When you first did, they, have, they have the dead eyes. They do. <laughs> Until you animate them. Exactly. It's just in the still images, they look creepy. So all I'm going to do now is, once again, I've worked in a flow of medium. I'm ready to export. So now I can now make my graphics higher. I'll click OK. And now we're really getting a realistic environment here. I'm going to go to export. We know we want images four and six. Export. We click our images here. We're going to deselect image one, and we are going to select four and six, we will click out of it. We have our two images. If we wanted to add our video, we have an option to do so there. But for the sake of this, let's go ahead and start our export. We can save it to Isla C, select. And now we'll wait and check them out. Hope it's fairly quick. So, oh, about one minute now. There we go. So for anyone who's waiting around for Revit to render their images, and it could actually often take you know, 10 or 20 minutes or something to that, it's really amazing how fast it is. Which it's amazing that it does all that rendering in real time. So you're actually designing kind of in that space. Exactly. So we'll just wait a little bit. It's making good steady progress. 50 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> See, look at this. There we go. 34 seconds. 22. Let's see. Let's see. 
18. And voila. Now what I'm going to do is exit out of twin motion. We've already saved our project. So let's get out of twin motion. Amazing. We'll go back to our slides. And check them out real quick. How are we looking, guys? That's very, <laughs> that looks very good. Like infinitely better than the, uh, the typical like uh, Revit rendering. Mm -hmm. Here's an example of what we were able to get out of that quick experimental exercise of making a Halloween party. We'll check out our other image of our dancing skeleton. And here we go. They're jamming out. It's night. Looks like a good time. Yeah. So the rendered image actually looks much better than it does in the real time environment. It's, it really does seem to amp up the quality on the export. I agree. And it makes it look really, really photorealistic too. And once again, I'm using a older iteration of this and it's only getting better with time. So it's really just up to what you have available to you, which I think is awesome as well. Mm -hmm. So we'll go back to kind of once again, how this ties into the goals of the program. Does anyone have any insights or anything that they want to share? Things they thought were cool, things they learned, something new? It seems easier to use that. I don't know. Like, yeah. I don't feel like user interface seems mm -hmm. I agree. Lots of options, lots of assets right there built into the program, which is great. Um, and yeah, it's something that I continue to use. I'm learning new things all the time because they're still updating it um, as we speak. So, you know. The options are basically limitless when it comes to your creativity. So I'm glad that this is another avenue that you can have the ability to, you know, conceptualize scary Halloween parties, you know. Actually, one of the big things that I position this as is, you know, for the architectural work, I use Revit to do buildings and stuff like that. The whole issue of putting furniture in and adding, you know, decorative assets, I've completely, you know, moved out of Revit and do it all within twin motion now because. Revit's really good at wall doors, windows, things mm -hmm. like that. But when it comes time to kind of really fluidly, you know, putting elements on the stage, like twin motion is so much easier. I 100% agree. It gives you really high quality things. And it's available on both Macs and PCs. So even you, PC, you, know, you Mac users, like myself, <laughs> can actually run it natively on the Mac, and it does a really uh, fine job even on older Macs like Marcus's but yep. it still does pretty good it still does pretty good I optimize settings that work for me and we're still able to get these really high quality projects so let's scan our conclusion we went through an example of what things look like we did our Halloween prompt we went ahead and went about the environment and then discussed today which I will put in this fourth frame what our final rendering was but besides that that was a great exercise, and I appreciate y'all's time and attention. Thank you for your help and thank you for sharing. It's been okay. fantastic.